Hmm. Okay, I'm sure you've seen it by now, but Sony have officially revealed the new PlayStation 5 controller. It's the first bit of actual physical hardware that we've seen from the PS5. Unfortunately, this time it wasn't presented by Mark Cerny in what will go down as quite possibly the most boring console presentation in history. <laughs> For your time today. I know, I get it, it was intended for developers, it was supposed to be presented at GDC before T-Virus took over the world, but it was the first bit of information that Sony had actually given us on their new console and it was fucking snoozeworthy. I have to say, generally speaking, I'm just not fucking down with this new way of doing things, where we're receiving intel through like an interview here or a blog post there. I mean, Microsoft just thought, fuck this thing altogether. Here's what it looks like. We're not going to tell you anything about it. We're just going to give it to Austin. He's going to tear it to bits and then put it back together. And then Sony's first forward-facing thing was fucking Mark Cerny snooze fest. Thank you. Where's the fanfare gone? I want a room full of people, fucking lights burning my retinas, crowds cheering. I want to be like, shit, tonight I need to cancel my plans because Sony are revealing their, their brand new console. I know we can't do that shit right now in current circumstances, but what did we get instead? Oh, guys, the new controller's ready to reveal. How should we do this thing? What about a YouTube live presentation? What about like a sleek as fuck video? Why don't we give one to Spawn Wave and just let him fucking rip the thing apart? No, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Let's do a blog post. Okay. Shall we put a video in there? Nah, nah, nah. Just words. The fuck do you want us to be excited? Like, this is like the user manual of new tech announcements. Anyway, scraping back the questionable way that Sony are announcing these things, we get to the real meat of this announcement, and it's actually pretty cool. It's this thing, the DualSense. So they've ditched the DualShock name. We were, I guess, expecting DualShock 5 and they've gone with dual sense and i suppose that's in line with this sort of push to video game immersion that sony are going with for the ps5 i'll be honest when i first saw this thing i wasn't fucking amazed it kind of looked to me like a third party weird wish controller or something like that but the more i inspected this thing the more my mind was changed on it firstly when i hold the two current gen pads in my hands there's a clear front runner out of these two and it's this one it's the xbox one pad this just feels much nicer in my hands it's bulkier it's got more weight behind it makes it feel like a good piece of tech and it's a shame because out of the two current gen pads i spend way more time with this one in my hand not that this is a bad controller or anything but looking at the new dual sense it kind of looks like they're leaning more towards the size and shape of the xbox one pad if you take a look at the curvature on the top and sides of the DualSense, you can see that they curve outwards like the Xbox One pad. The shoulder buttons are now slightly angled, which I like. I think that'll be more comfortable. And the analog sticks are now housed within the pad itself rather than the weird uh, googly, dangly bits. Here's one thing I want to mention, though. I do think that the... Uh, DualSense is probably going to be slightly smaller uh, than the Xbox One pad. As expected, Sony have stuck with the two analog sticks side by side and the D-pad up top left. Xbox obviously flipped that round and they go with the analog stick top left and the D-pad down here. Having that there is what allows the Xbox pad to be bulkier and meatier because if you take if you take this pad and imagine the analog stick being there you feel like it just makes me want to fucking throw up to be honest with you i feel like i'm stretching to get to it it just feels way too uncomfortable playstation combats this by having their grips being way daintier and smaller so that when i'm holding the pad my thumb comfortably sits over the analog stick anyway 
So since they're sticking with the left analog stick position, you can assume that they're going to stick with those dainty legs. Haptic feedback. What's this? It feels like something shaking in a glass. Welcome to Gadget or Gimmick. Today we're discussing haptic feedback. I don't know what to say about this one really. Do I give a shit if my pad has the ability to feel like it's got ice cubes rumbling around inside it? Not really. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot that I don't know about this technology and its endless possibilities, but it's just one of these things, isn't it? It's all good and well it being there, but only if the devs are gonna actually fucking use it. There's no better example of this than Nintendo's revolutionary haptic feedback Joy-Cons. They don't fucking do anything. Outside of 1-2 Switch, I'm not sitting there on other Nintendo games and being like, wow, this, this feels real, this is complete immersion. I'm not feeling the different terrains that I drive on in, in Mario Kart, and that's apparently what this thing can do. There's a funny bit of the blog post. It says... We had a great opportunity with PS5 to innovate by offering game creators the ability to explore how they can heighten that feeling of immersion through our new controller. This is why we've adopted haptic feedback, which adds a variety of powerful sensations you feel when you play, such as the slow grittiness of driving a car through mud. The slow grittiness of driving a car through mud. Powerful sensation. I think somebody needs to give Jim Ryan a lesson on powerful sensations. I mean, we've seen this time and time again, all these new technologies that come with new consoles that are going to give you an unprecedented level of immersion in your gameplay that the devs just do not get behind and then they just fall by the wayside. I'm not ripping on this feature, like, I'm happy it's there, but I want to be happy it's there in the same way I'm happy that, like, fast food delivery exists, and not in the way that I'm happy that I have an exercise bike in my dining room. I'm happy that they both exist, but I feel the benefit of one much more than the other. Some other things to talk about then, the light bar. I love lights. I love shit that lights up. But whoever's fucking idea it was to put the original light bar on the back of the controller where nobody can see it. Just, eh. Needless to say, I'm happy they've moved it to the front now and it illuminates the touchpad. Welcome back to Gadget or Gimmick. Today's topic is the touchpad. Okay, so I shouldn't need to tell you this one, but this is definitely a gimmick. So far, anyway. I guess Sony decided that they like the touchpad and I can still see its value. But like we discussed earlier, it's one of those things that devs have just thought, nah, can't be fucked doing anything with that. I can see why devs creating games for multiple platforms might think I haven't got time for that especially when the features won't translate onto the other platforms. But what about Sony's in-house development teams, the ones that specifically develop games for the PlayStation? Why are they not forcing those guys to use it? Like, make sure that you use this fucking touchpad. Make sure that you do something with it because it's, it's sat in the middle of the fucking controller. If you're going to stick with it, make them fucking use it. Make them do something with it. I'm not talking about like over complicating it and forcing it into gameplay, but at least give it some decent UI function or something like, you know, games have incorporated it into games as like a map button. But then when I press the map button, I then navigate the map using the fucking analog stick. <laughs> no, allow me to swipe and shit on the map. Furthermore, why have Sony not programmed it to work with the console interface? It's basically a laptop trackpad sat in the middle of my pad. Let me use it to navigate the interface. And how can developers be expected to take it seriously if Sony themselves aren't even utilising its purpose? Well, watch this space, because in eight years' time, when we're all talking about the PS6 and the Xbox XXX Hardcore XL, if the touchpad still hasn't been used, then... I am just going to be fucking untethered. What else have we got? Um, the other obvious thing is that we'll be moving from micro USB to USB-C, which is excellent news. Fucking get in. Fuck micro USB. In the blog post, Sony actually acknowledged that they've taken into consideration battery performance, battery life, um, but we didn't get any actual figures on that, so it'll be interesting to see... Um, what kind of life we get on this thing. The PlayStation button is now a cut-out version of the PlayStation symbol rather than the circular um, button that we have on the PlayStation 4 pad. I think it looks cool. 
They've kept the speaker on the pad, which, again, didn't get used much, really. But when it did get used, I thought it was a nice feature. I liked it. So I'm definitely not opposed to it being there on the DualSense. They've added a mic to the pad. Cool. I mean, I'll definitely want to know how good the mic is, but I think it's a decent addition, especially if you're just sort of fucking around on a game and you just want to dip into chat for a second and then dip back out and you don't want to have to go searching for your headset or whatever. Finally, the colour. What does the colour say about the console that is going to be shipped with this pad? Well, to me, it says that the console has to be predominantly white, right? Like, the pad's white. The pad does have like black triggers and the black bit across the bottom, but it is predominantly white. So I think it's safe to say that we can assume that the console will at least be predominantly white. The D-pad looks to have that sort of glossy finish to it. it kind of reminds me of the Vita D-pad. X square, circle and triangle appear not to be colour coded for the first time, which was a surprise. The colours are pretty synonymous with the way that Sony brands PlayStation products. All in all, I'm into it. The design has definitely grown on me. I'm into the haptic feedback, the adaptive triggers and the touchpad, so long as the devs actually use them this time. I'm into the new light bar position because now I can actually fucking see it. I'm down with the new controller in general, USB-C, hopefully better battery life. Now just show me the console. That's it from me for this vid. Thank you very much for listening to me rant. If you like the vid, hit the thumbs up button. Comment below what your thoughts are on the DualSense. Subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you next time. Shit! <laughs>